I wrote the script in 1995. Um, it went through the studio process. Uh, I got really high marks, characterization, story, and stuff like that. But um, we, we, did, we didn't get any bites from the studios. Um, favorable reviews from the readers, but um, you know, it was either too patriotic or they didn't want to do an old person's story and, and stuff. So I had met Charlton Heston at a premiere and uh, we started talking and, and um, I, the more I talked to him, the more I realized, I mean, this guy, this guy would be great for, for the lead. About a month later, I actually knocked on his front door and he answered <laughs> and I handed him a script. And, uh, it, you know, he remembered me from the premiere, but, uh, it, he, and he called me a few hours later and said, yeah, I want to do this. So I, I worked with him for um, about a year on it with his son, Frazier. And uh, we ended up, it ended up that basically everybody that we had in mind for the film died. Uh, Richard Farnsworth, Jack Lemmon, uh, and then Chuck came to me in 2000 and said, my Alzheimer's is, it's difficult for me to remember stuff. I'm getting really bad, so I've got to step out as well. In 2002, I raised local money to do it on an even smaller budget. So it went from an $8 million budget to a $2.5 million budget. And uh, we, uh, we were actually two weeks into filming with Mira Savino and Charles Durning. Uh, and the second group of investors couldn't uh, do their fulfillment, and we had to shut down again. So I, I thought really that this was it. I, I mean, I could never see this movie getting made. We were right on the edge of the technology curve. Um, so we shot in 35. Had we shot in HD, uh, we would have probably finished the film. But HD wasn't ready yet in 2002. In 2011, we shot <clears throat> a, a small film called The Last Mark, now changed to Card Shark. And it was really kind of a, a warm up uh, for The Last Man Club. Uh, we were looking at all of my scripts and, and uh, some of my older film buddies, they said, you've got to do this movie. You've got to do it. And so uh, we, uh, we raised money and uh, hell or high water, we, we shot the movie. Now, uh, oddly enough, I mean, the, the film still felt cursed a little bit. Um, a week into pre-production, I was diagnosed with ocular melanoma. So I, I was determined not to let that, that stop us. We got caught in a, a sandstorm in Tucson, 40 mile an hour winds. We lose a, a 6K light blows over and just explodes. The generator goes out and then the car gets choked up and, and won't start because of the, the sand. And uh, I was like, and that was the second day of shooting. And I'm like, wow, this movie really is cursed. I remember walking out in this 40 mile in, uh, wind uh, sandstorm and saying, you know, is there a higher power at work here? You know, I mean, it was just unbelievable, the stuff that, the, the obstacles that we had making this film. Really, I, I got the idea. I'd wanted to do something. I love history. and I wanted to do something about our, our greatest generation. My father was, uh, went through seven major battles in the South Pacific uh, uh, before he turned 20. And, um, I didn't know what or where, and I was sitting in the back of a cab in New York City, and a 65 Dodge Dart pulls up next to us at a red light, and um, there were four World War II veterans in there with a plastic flag stuck in the dashboard, like right there, and uh, they were cutting up and laughing. I think they had beers in their hands. They didn't care. They were laughing, and, and uh, I was like, I got to make a movie about these guys, and the very next morning, I read an article in the New York Times about a last man club. And I was like, okay, that's it. It, it. That's the basis of the story. And then I looked at all the things that aging veterans are facing today. And I wove that into the story with each character having a different, um, a, a different thing, uh, obstacle to deal with. A Last Man Club actually started during Napoleonic times. Uh, during World War I, uh, in, when they were fighting in the trenches in France, um, they'd heard about, you know, our American soldiers, you know, learned about the Last Man Club through the French. And uh, so uh, they, they actually started with the Army, and they would, the surviving members of the platoon would, 
would buy a, a bottle of cognac or wine um, while still overseas, and then it would either stay at a, VA, uh, a, a VFW or an American Legion, you know, in, encased in glass, or it would just go from one surviving member to the next. And so the last man left alive drank to his fallen brothers. I picked the B-17 because it was such a romantic airplane. Um, it's, it was such a beautiful airplane, and, and you know, they call it the Romantic War. It, it's kind of strange calling it a Romantic War, but it was. So I think that the B-17 represents that romance. 